Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're talking about the bench work or the frame below my layouts. I received multiple requests to uh, share the details of how I build the frame. Some of you noticed that I used IKEA shelving system elements and would like to know more about it. So uh, let's talk about it. I'm more than happy to share more details, especially since this is one of the kind of unexpected, uh, simple ideas that proved to work really well and actually exceeded my expectations uh, over the time. But before we go any farther, uh, everything what you see here, pretty much 95 or 90% of that structure um, and the bench work was set up already over a decade ago, so about 15 years ago. Most of the tracks, at least 80% of them were laid um, about 14, 15 years ago as well with some small modifications. So the entire structure um, really was tested well um, over at least 12 to 13 years uh, since the layout is in operation. And over the entire time of, of um, 10 plus years of use, I had absolutely no issues with the substrate shifting, bulging or um, any issues with tracks uh, cracking or getting disconnected or any electrical issues. Um, however, all the joints, the track joints are soldered uh, together. So surprisingly stable um, structure. As, as, as I mentioned, exceeded my expectations. So yes, I'm using IKEA IVAR system uh, to build the main structure. And you can see one of the examples here. I'm using the top shelf to support, uh, of course, the bench work and then the lower shelves to um, keep the entire structure square, uh, square, which was very helpful setting it up since I was working um, on, the, on the structure by myself. And of course, the shelves are adding the ever needed uh, for any molded ray rotor or hobbyist uh, space for storage. And this is one of the example of one of the uh, units. Uh, for the top in the uh, train station, I'm using 20 inch wide shelves, which are providing plenty of space for home size layout to build very nice elaborate um, station. And in the main line, I decided to go for a 12 inch wide uh, units and they're more than sufficient in space, in my opinion. Now, um, I started with the three center uh, units. You can see one here, second and third, and then started expanding to right and left. Um, these are the 20 inch units and the 12 inch unit is here. This is the bottom part of it. You can see the junction or the interface between the supporting legs and the shelf. This is stand-up style uh, bench work. The top is at 51 inch above the ground and I use 49 inch supporting elements, uh, stock elements from IKEA to build up uh, the whole structure. Uh, you can see the shelvings. That's uh, of course soft wood, so are the legs. So obviously you don't want to build the layout on the shelves. This will not work. The whole idea was to uh, build the layout on a thick plywood to stabilize the entire structure and um, optimize the space in terms of uh, surface area. So what I decided to do once I had all the shelves set up and the kind of main layout set up around the room, I went to local lumber shop uh, and I bought the biggest uh, sheets of uh, plywood I could haul in my car or purchase at the lumber yard. This is 20 millimeters uh, thick, seven layers or three quarters inch thick, seven layers uh, plywood, which is uh, screwed and laminated to the shelves from the bottom. And there's a lot of the screws I use to kind of laminate these two layers together. Once I added the plywood on top, that added massive amount of rigidity and stability. This is not going anywhere. You can't shake it, you can't move it. This is rock solid uh, bench work. Knowing that the shelves themselves are not necessarily the most rigid structures, I decided to lay the uh, plywood in very specific ways. So you can see a seam here, that's one junction. And then from this point to the right, the entire surface on top of the layout is one massive uh, piece, uninterrupted piece of uh, plywood all the way to about here. Then it goes all the way there, about somewhere there where the peak is in the background, there's another seam and junction. And 
here's another one and this entire section is also one massive uninterrupted piece of uh, plywood and i purposely located the junction in such a way so is before the first turnout i wanted to make sure that the entire station head is on one solid piece of plywood just in case if anything is going to happen with uh, with the structure below and start shifting i wanted to avoid any potential issues with with sims there's a small gap you can see here that's uh, insulation gap for a programming track other than that rest of the tracks are solid so like i said there's a one junction here this is all one big piece of plywood all the way over there once i had that piece uh, screwed on top of the shelves of course it was overhanging quite a bit i use a jigsaw um, here's the tool and i pretty much trimmed the access amount of uh, material all the way around just following the contours yeah it doesn't look pretty i'm not a carpenter and i'm not gonna try to uh explain why i don't like working with wood i don't have uh, a hand for it i admire people who can build um, intricate furnitures and beautiful pieces of of uh, furniture i'm not the one so uh, but anyway, so this is very rough and may look a little bit uh, primitive. It works very, very well and it's been in work um, and use for good 14, 15 years now. Of course, the straight sections like this one were very straightforward to build. You just simply build the shelves, put the um, plywood on top of it, just simply screw it from the bottom and there is your um, bench work. Um, things were a little bit more complex once i got into the curves uh, you can buy um, pre-designed pre-cut 90 degrees shelving for these units of course but it's so small and tight the radius for the for the tracks will have to be probably six inches to turn uh, pretty much instantly 90 degrees it's obviously not designed for all the railroaders so i had to get a little bit more uh, creative um, i bought additional 20 inch wide shelves and i cut them these are two units um, from each end in 22 and a half degrees increments so the total will give you 90 degrees uh, turn and it turned to be very nice and easy curve i think some of them are reaching about 1400 millimeters uh, radius of course when you start cutting off the shelves uh, this is the interface which is part of the end of each of the shelves and if you start cutting and modifying you are losing that interface so i had to uh, build braces and just simply screw them all on to directly to the stanchers or to the legs here and then lay the shelf on top of it and screw it from the top and you can see the next one The beauty of this system is once you have the straight sections done you already have everything square leveled and on one layer and you can start building up and just extending and having some of the stanchers and the legs already prefabricated is very easy to maintain the height and just simply keep it extending i like the ease of working with this system uh, so much i ended up buying a whole bunch of these supports and additional shelves and just simply build like additional braces and so on using the same material and uh, to be honest that's another part is these are the three original tools that i used to build that entire uh, framework or that bench work so you have a jigsaw i don't know i paid like 40 dollars for it black and decker and um cordless drill and hand saw a couple of screwdrivers and you are in business and that's exactly what i use uh, to build that uh, whole structure like i mentioned earlier i'm not a carpenter i don't have a thing for working with wood i didn't want it to spend uh, the money on setting up a carpentry shop um, and i decided to uh, take a challenge um, and looks like created quite interesting hack once again over 10 years in use um, and works like a dream uh, i expanded that layout a couple of times using exactly same technique if i have to build a new layout which i seri i'm seriously consider um, i will most likely use exactly the same uh, idea very cost effective that's another incentive to look at it uh, i remember making some of the calculations or running some of the calculations these pre-formed and pre-cut and pre-assembled uh, supports were probably about um, 
40% cheaper than buying lumber and trying to build this from scratch, not to mention the equipment required. Couple of more disclaimers. This layout, as you can see, looking at the floor, is inside the house. This is not a garage or attic. Um, I live in the southern state, so we have a quite big swings in um, humidity between uh, summer and uh, winter. So the house is both heated and air, air conditioned. And I'm sure that helped with the stability of that entire structure. And maybe one more detail. Oh, by the way, I'm not proud of this, but this is classic um, example um, of my um, woodworking skills. <laughs> but anyway, obviously the tracks are not laid directly on the, on the plywood. Uh, they are laid on a cork. The entire station is one cork bed all the way to the other end. And the main line um, is laid on the cork risers, uh, which you can buy from your um, local hobby shop. Happy model railroading. Please let me know if you have any additional questions or comments.